Hi there. This is a quick update for Game of Thrones House of the Dragon news that HBO has finally rescheduled their first official Game of Thrones franchise convention upfront, which they were originally going to have back in February in Las Vegas, but had to cancel due to the COVID spike. It has now been rescheduled for December 9th through 11th in Los Angeles. And the other big news is they got a huge new guest star there. Kit Harrington is coming. <laughs> Jon Snow, Kit Harrington. And not just, oh, you know, it's Kit Harrington. It's right after he had that, we had that huge leak coming out that he is pursuing a Jon Snow sequel spinoff of some kind. We don't know, is it a new thing? Is it more of an epilogue? We don't know the scope of what it's going to be, but it was revealed that you know, Martin himself revealed in a blog post after it leaked out, Kit came to us, he's already hired up his own staff of writers, they're already going through draft scripts, and he's been working on it for about a year and a half. And we don't know if that'll ultimately ever get picked up. I mean, the fact that Kit himself wants to push for it means it probably will. But that will be the question on everyone's minds there. Of, Kit, what are you doing with this new project? Uh, we don't know if any of the House of the Dragon uh, cast and crew will be coming to this. We hope so, and they said we'll be adding more as we do. Keep in mind that COVID is still a thing and will get worse in the colder months with the new variants, of course, always a thing. So we'll see what people... I wouldn't blame if no one ultimately could come on an international flight from, from Europe because of all the COVID stuff. What is nice is that all of the guests who were going to go to the February convention are coming to this. And they put together a pretty decent roster. I mean, there's convention mainstays who are fun people who like doing panels but weren't that big. Like Christian Nairn. We love Christian Nairn. He's Hodor. And Daniel Portman is Podrick Payne. And Christopher Hivew loves coming to conventions to talk about Tormund. But they, they're on the circuit a lot. But then they have people who don't normally go to conventions that much. They got Jack Gleason. Joffrey Baratheon. He retired from acting. He never does conventions that much anymore. So... That's pretty impressive. On top of that, they got the Greyjoy siblings. They got Alfie Allen, who's Theon, and Gemma Wellen, who's Yara Greyjoy. And lastly, they got Isaac Hempstead Wright, he's, you know, Bran Stark. So this is a pretty significant roster of people now, with the, particularly with the addition of Kit Harrington. So they might be adding more people, more cast or crew, we're not sure. This is a pretty decent attempt at this. And like I say, you know, oh, it's an official convention, it's not fan-run. Well, it's nice as a, it's an oversized upfront presentation. They have upfronts at the Critics Association things. Well, let's do it as a convention, hand out stuff, and they'll have like one panel stage where they give announcements. The format is it's like DC Fandom or Star Wars Celebration. Better analogy is DC Fandom because, you know, like DC and HBO have the same parent company, so the crossover there. But okay, they... they put together a thing. They're going to make, I hope, announcements at this. It's not just it's a convention, because I'm not going to it in a pandemic, but uh, who knows what announcements they could have at this. Now, we thought when it was coming in February, they'd have casting announcements for House of the Dragon. They might have, but the opportunity has passed. Actually pause and think of what is going to happen six weeks after the House of the Dragon finale. The world, generally, doesn't know about House of the Dragon or expects it to fail because most of the mainstream news rage quit after season eight, and they don't even look up if... A lot of them think Benioff and Weiss are still running it. If you, if you look when they do blind reactions to trailers, it's, wait, who's running this? When is it set? There, there's a few things like Entertainment Weekly and Hollywood Reporter covering it because they have ties to HBO, thank God, but generally not a lot of people are, are really excited for this. I just saw... I did my rounds on the reactions to the full trailer last week, and a lot of people, even though I think they put decent effort into San Diego Comic-Con for House of the Dragon, they got George R. R. Martin there. <sighs> it's going to be an uphill battle. What I've always said is, based on the source material and based on following all their filming reports for two years, it looks like they're doing a really good job. I don't doubt that season one will be good. It's a question of will people even tune in, and that's the dark legacy of having such a bad ending. 
but I'm pretty sure that Season 1 will be a mega-hit, and even the people reacting to who went to the advanced screening for the premiere said this was really good. It'll be like when Season 1 Game of Thrones came out all over again, that this dark horse surprise hit will come out, and suddenly everyone will be playing Follow the Leader. That six weeks out from this stunning, really good first season, it, simply being good will stun people. It doesn't even need to be great, it just needs to be decent compared to what came before, to, to, to stun people. No, it wasn't the franchise's fault, it was the people in charge making stupid decisions or ending it early. I'm pretty sure from the recent interviews, HBO itself, I don't blame them for this, this is what a rational person would do, they have multiple other spin-offs lined up, which are in like the pilot script phase, not just, well, Kit's uh, sequel thing for John, but there's a Nymeria thing in the script phase. Young Corliss, The Voyages of Young Corliss the Sea Snake is in the script phase. Dunk and Egg in the script phase went from pitch phase to script phase, and they said we're kind of holding off to see how season one does. Which is good, that's what a rational person would do, so... Think of where we will be six weeks out from the finale of what's probably going to be a really good season based on all the leaks we've had. There will be an explosion. This is the exact time that HBO would be announcing other spinoffs. Or like anime projects, multiple anime projects, which are probably going to come out sooner than the other stuff. That expect a lot of announcements of future projects to come out. When this was in February, we thought there'd be casting announcements. They might have season two casting announcements of this, for all we know, due to the production overlap. We, we might get House of the Dragon casting stuff or writers for the next season. I really think they will announce, maybe not that something's greenlit to series, but maybe that they ordered a pilot episode of Nymeria or something, or, or Young Corliss, that, that's a distinct possibility at this thing. And I know not everyone can go because of the COVID stuff. George R. R. Martin got COVID when he went to San Diego Comic-Con. He was posting videos of that, that he had to spend a few days in quarantine. It was, it was a minor variant. He got better because he's fully vaccinated. But that was an issue. And I know the same things came up when fans were talking about the February one, who would go and who wouldn't, because, you know, hey, there's vaccines now. I know, like Tony Teflon said, he'd go no matter what, and, you know, it's West Coast, it's from Las Vegas to L.A., but still, that's West Coast, given that he lives in the tri-state area, and he lives in New Jersey or something. I live in the New York area as well. I wouldn't travel such a large distance myself to the West Coast in the middle of a pandemic, you know? I would, I, I would be hesitant to go to an event at New York Comic Con. I'm not going to New York Comic Con again until I don't know when this pandemic is going to stabilize. I'd be hesitant to go to that. Even They don't even have good Game of Thrones programming at New York Comic Con anymore. They haven't since, like, season four. So I, I don't... I was always hesitant to travel even before the pandemic, and now it, it's not worth it. I know, like, um, A Feast of Ice and Fire, the, the woman who writes the cookbook stuff for Westeros, she said... I am not traveling in this pandemic. I would not go to the February convention. So that was a big point of conversation of would people want to go to this? Some do, some don't. That's your life. I'm not telling you what to do. If you do, please be careful because you know, it happened to Martin. I, I don't know what's going to happen with the COVID stuff. It's kind of unpredictable. And we think we always think it's winding down that it comes back in the colder months. So again, fans may or may not be going to this. Like, I know David Lightbringer got to go to the advanced screening in L.A. Well, he lives in California. He lives in, in San Francisco. That isn't as far as, I, I think it's dangerous to travel long distances in, in, in this. Like, I, I'm i happy that a fan who has been actively covering House of the Dragon got to go to it and really give us a lot of information about it. I would have been scared to go to that because, you know, Martin got COVID. So... I don't... It seems like they're always skipping New York for actually announcing things. It's always, well, our offices are in Los Angeles. That That's where the hub of everything is, but good for them. So I don't know if Martin will come to this either, you know, skipping out from San Francisco. I mean, it's time that he could spend writing, so maybe he shouldn't. <laughs> but yes, they have, uh, they have finally rescheduled the convention. It's six weeks out from the finale, so... Assuming this the season is a success, they'll be announcing season two stuff. They'll be announcing, probably announcing other spinoffs that are that were on hold to see how well season one is doing. And Kit Harrington is coming. 
which to me is bigger than, say, if Amelia Clark came or Peter Dinklage, because there was just this giant new Jon Snow project that leaked out for him. That will be the talk of this thing. So I'll keep updating as we get news about this. This will be the news event of the winter. Particularly because if you think about the turnaround time, there is no way we are getting a Blu-ray set by Christmas. That it always takes four to five months to make the Blu-ray, and unless they got a head start, which I doubt they did, uh, we are not getting that in the two months between the finale and Christmas. That based on when Succession Season 3 came out, think like March. We're getting the Blu-ray with the massive amount of information in it, the behind-the-scenes featurettes, all the commentaries, there's a ton of stuff to go over in a Blu-ray set. We're not going to get any of that in time for Christmas. We'll, st we'll, we'll have post-season interviews and stuff, but it'll be different from the normal news cycle we were used to for Game of Thrones for six seasons of, well, it comes out in fall, and then at Christmas we get all the, the information. It's different now. We're not going to be doing that. Just the, the schedule doesn't line up. Instead, for winter, we will be getting a lot of news out of that convention. And come to think of it, I say winter, you know, I've talked about this in, in uh, videos, that we need to start treating Sao Paulo Comic Con in Brazil as co-equal with New York Comic Con or San Diego Comic Con or London Comic Con, because that is a major convention by attendance, by the number of people who go. They've already sent cast members in the final seasons of Game of Thrones. They sent... Maisie Williams and the showrunners went there, and they did not have announcements there, unfortunately, last time, this past December, even though we thought there would be, but I say winter Northern Hemisphere. Southern Hemisphere, summer, Sao Paulo Comic Con is also in December, so those will be the two big news events instead of Blu-rays, will be this convention in Los Angeles, as well as the Sao Paulo one, who knows if they'll make announcements you know, come to think of it, if they're going to make announcements, they would shift anything they might say at Sao Paulo Comic Con to the dedicated convention in Los Angeles. Yeah, I, that might be bad news for the Brazil one now that I think. But they might send guests there for House of the Dragon anyway, so we'll see what happens. And it's, I'm not physically going to these conventions, it's that news comes out of these conventions, and they have others oh, a guest who might talk about what they're working on. Oh, on top of that, it says the convention will be hosted by uh, the podcaster who hosted San Diego Comic-Con, actually, Jason Concepcion, and Greta Johnson. They were both just hired up to do the official podcast on, you know, HBO. They're trying to make a new after-show thing, and rather than go through all the trouble of making the fake sets and stuff, they said, let's just have an official podcast we put out on our main YouTube channel. And... Jason and Greta will be doing their stuff. They did podcasting for Game of Thrones on The Ringer and stuff, and she was on another one. So they've been hired up as the new point of contact that they're doing the after show, and they're the people that do conventions. Like, they, they did a pretty good job at Comic-Con. So, I mean, it was his first time, but I, I enjoyed it. He was generally trying to keep it moving along, ask intelligent questions. He will be handling this DC fandom style up front with panels official Game of Thrones thing in Los Angeles, December 9th through 11th. And mark your calendars, there's going to be news coming out of this in the big explosion that will come in the wake of the world realizing, wait, House of the Dragon is good? And HBO will stop putting a hold on all the other projects. They're waiting to see how season one does.